Hey everyone, my name is Urban. Uh, really excited to be here with this community and uh, thank you so much for Sui for hosting this. Uh, so I'm going to do a live demo, so we're going to watch a few videos instead of what we're working on. Alright, so today we're supposed to be a hands-on workshop, but barely can't connect our laptops, so we're just going to walk you through very briefly on what we're open sourcing today. Uh, and today we're open sourcing SuiKit. Uh, and SuiKit is a fully featured iOS Swift SDK to build native iOS applications on Sui blockchain. Uh, it's a bit of a walkthrough really of what's, uh, what's happening. So to tell you a bit about us, uh, we're, we're an end-to-end -end game development studio. So what that means is that we're building our own PM products related to gaming, but also gaming infrastructure, such as SDKs and other things to allow game developers to build seamless and more immersive gaming experiences that leverage the blockchain. And we're also uh, academic researchers, so we do a lot of research regarding gaming, immersive experiences, human-computer interaction, and so forth. And this is myself, so if you want to guys to connect, feel free to drop me a DM or over Twitter or any other kind of social media. Uh, I've been in the space for quite some time, since 2012. Uh, I'm a co-founder of a few different things you might have heard, uh, like Pizza Down, Boca House, uh, and also did some research at NASA and a few other places. I'm a PhD student also working on this kind of tech at my research lab. All right, so... I had a few folks ask me, uh, they're like, okay, why, why would I, why would people want to build native applications currently when you have things like React.js or all these cross-platform uh, uh, frameworks, right? And the reality is that there's so many things that uh, actually all these cross-platform frameworks don't provide that native uh, applications do, right? So things like better performance, uh, greater security, advanced user experience, and also one of the important things is that it's easier to launch to market. Uh, because ideally, when you go ahead and take an application to market, to the App Store, to uh, Google Play, and so forth, there's a lot of really setbacks when you build these uh, uh, applications using like things like uh, React as native. So to elaborate a bit further, uh, better performance. So when you're building a native application uh, using Swift, you can access it the hardware directly. You can do optimizations, you can access cameras, and so forth. Whereas with React as, you don't get that direct access. There's always a middle layer in between. Uh, for you to access a lot of this native support and so forth. The other key thing is that you can also do uh, a lot of crazy things, right, that hasn't been done yet. If you guys heard about that app called Be Real, Be Real accesses cameras, the, the front and the back facing camera. And so this is not really supported with all these cross platform frameworks. So this is something custom that was done by the actual uh, developers. The other part is that, you know, like one of the key things with uh, iOS in general is that they have an amazing user experience, right? Everybody loves the experience on, on Apple, uh, and it's because they really define these standards for how developers should build these apps. But when you look at really what happens with React, JS, Native, and other kind of cross-platform applications, you don't get that. Usually you get different kind of button sizes, different kind of gestures, and so forth. Uh, and so that's one of the, like, the key reasons really to look into it. Uh, and the other part is security. So probably, I think, about two weeks ago, I received a notification on my iPhone that said, uh, I think it was, um, had to make a, an emergency update. To my, to my phone, right? Uh, and it was because essentially there was a bug discover and I had to, uh, have to update it. Uh, and this is directly provided by Apple. So because Apple is a developer of Swift, similarly, if there's any kind of security risk or things that, that they might have discovered in the language, they really go to market and release it. Whereas when you look at these cross-platform frameworks, it'll take some time for these, uh, these patches to come through, right? The other reason is, uh, Fear bugs. If you guys are engineers, developers, you know that building cross-platform applications that, you know, essentially run on iOS and Android, it's it's a pain because you have to consider all the optimizations and customability between different devices and so forth. Uh, and scalability. One of the things that we're going to show briefly, and you guys can come see me in person too, is that scalability, just not in terms of how the application can support thousands of users in the backend, but also scalability in terms of like gaming applications, so even augmented reality applications, hosting multiple objects on the device. And because it's being built native, this means that you have access to the hardware itself, and you perform heavy optimizations. One of the applications that we're building, it renders 103 objects, right? And so when we started testing this, uh, this, uh, this, this essentially the application on React Native SDK, after about 20 objects being rendered in, in real time, the application started to heat up, the, the device started getting laggy and so forth, but when we built it natively, we can actually optimize how the, the actual objects are stored in memory and off memory. 
Uh, so it's it it definitely uh, things that uh, that scale out when you build applications. And the other parts, which is what I mentioned, right? Easy to go to market uh, and instant updates. Okay, so then the other big thing, in particular to uh, iOS, why do you want to build a native iOS application? If you guys are following along, uh, WMDC CD is happening uh, in a few days, and there's a big announcement, right? The big announcement is really augmented reality or MR or XR. So iOS is coming up with its own device, which means that with this SDK, anybody can go ahead and build the bridge these applications are coming out. Uh, sorry, <laughs> bridge. Brings a lot of the, the, the native SUI applications that allow them to interact with the actual devices that uh, uh, Apple is releasing. All right, so SUI Kit is a fully featured SDK. So currently, what it supports is 90% uh, and probably in the next few weeks will support 100% of what currently the TypeScript SDK supports. You have full feature SEC256K1, uh, curves EDC25519, which is very special because currently on um, iPhone devices and uh, certain Android devices, you have this notion of secure enclaves. So it's a hardware piece within the phone itself that allows you to kind of create private keys internally and then use these private keys to sign messages without exposing the private key, which is very important. Uh, it's something that this SDK provides uh, for developers. And the other part is that. If you're, maybe you want to build a wallet, right? And you want to build a fully native mobile wallet. You can use this SDK directly. We have high with deterministic wallet support. So all you have to do is literally build the user interface and build the back end to kind of optimize a query and cache the blockchain and so forth. And the other part is, again, RPC client implementation, which is very standard. And one of the things that we're very proud of is uh, a BCS implementation. So being able to encode and decode data or, or tr transactions, etc., using uh, the canonical serialization uh, uh, library that we built. And of course, things like concurrency and also support for building iOS, Mac, meaning actual desktop applications, tvOS, and by extension, watchOS applications with SDK. All right, so I'm going to walk through this briefly because this is literally showing you code. Uh, so bear with me, but this is an example of what we could do with, uh, with the SDK itself. All right, so similarly to the type of SDK, you can go ahead and go ahead and derive, derive a private key, which then you can, uh, you can create a private key, which then you can derive a private key from it. Uh, and this could be either you know, 25519, or here we're doing a sec P256 K1P. <coughs> Uh, you can also go ahead and do things like signing transactions with that private key and so forth, just like any other kind of SDK, in particular touch for SDK. And you can also create a HD wallet directly. Again, this is as simple as uh, two lines of code. And again, using this, you can build your own wallet, just add a wrapper UI for it and, uh, and uh, some extra features to it. Uh, and again, account management and so forth. And a few other things like uh, being able to interact with DevNet for doing airdrops. So one of the things that, that we are currently doing as an example is the ability to launch this desktop uh, faucet DevNet application that allows you to directly like, uh, like query the blockchain, get some tokens, and start playing around uh, with SUI. And, and things like transfer objects that can be done really on a type of decay is now supported on Swift for iOS. Uh, this is an example of transfer SUI. If you guys have uh, used the TypeScript SDK, it's almost a one to one representation of, of, of the TypeScript SDK. Merge coins, I'm just going to run through them. Move calls, publish modules. So, publish modules is not ideal for uh, an iOS mobile application, but rather for a desktop application. So, this is part of what we're building currently so that essentially, if you're a game uh, developer that's using Mac, Mac OS, for example, you can launch this desktop application that allows you to publish your modules directly and seamlessly without having to really go into the CLI or any other command line uh, interfaces that are out there. So own objects, get objects, get transactions, get points. Just a few more, bear with me. This is an example of the BCS. It's a bit different. It's a bit of a different take on the TypeScript BCS implementation, but it works as a one-to-one. -one. And so, this is just like one of the initial sample dApps that we built. This is showing that you can build your own wallet, literally, like with our SDK. So, if you want to do this as an example,
Yeah, this is all fully native, so it's not a TypeScript or any React native area. So, what's next? So, what else are we open sourcing pretty soon? Or introducing really to this SDK and the community itself? Well, one of the cool ones is really capsules. Have you guys heard about capsule support from uh, Paul Fenica? He's a big contributor to the community. And we're adding full support to it. Not just only to SUI Kit, but also to all of the case. And feel free to follow uh, him and his project really uh, on Twitter. This is one of his upcoming apps really that supports capsules, the capsule standard for, for SUI, you can see. So you can store uh, a lot of these objects on chain. So this uh, implementation of, of this game that leverages capsule standard that Paul put together, um, it works seamlessly because the actual game application is running native, so it's not built using again any kind of WebGL or other cross-platform uh, framework. So it currently is using Unity, which then builds to uh, to native overall. Shout out to the Capsules team. So we're working together on integrating that standard uh, in, in SUI Kit and our, our other uh, open source projects. And the other thing that is coming soon from us is so we're actually going to add more support to SUI Kit, but also releasing a fully featured Android Kotlin SDK. And most importantly, we have an up and coming Unity SDK for SUI as well. So if you guys have heard of like the current Web3 initiative for Unity, which essentially relates to Verify Solutions, uh, we're the core contributors and developers of half of the SDKs that are out there. So we'd love to get SUI's name out there uh, alongside the other uh, ecosystems for, for Unity overall. And also feel free to reach out to me and let us know what else we should bring to, uh, to the SUI Eco. But with that, uh, I appreciate your time and thanks so much to everyone for coming and for SUI for uh, having me here today. Feel free to connect with me, follow me, and I see our research and our projects. Thank you very much.